So I started with two 10 by 10 canvases that I had put a base coat of white on the day before. And then I had yellow, brown, and orange paint. I had to make up my own orange paint um, with the red and the yellow because I didn't have any. I drew a circle on the canvas and then started drawing a sunflower. I'm not an artist. I hope this looks like a sunflower by the time it's done uh, to you guys. If not, we could think of it as another flower. But anyway, I used the orange and then the red, and I continued to go around and round until I got the effect that I thought I wanted. Now I just painted it brown in the middle because um, you're really not going to see it anyway because I'm putting a brooch and some other jewelry over it. When I was done with that one, I had another 10 by 10 canvas that I uh, painted another sunflower on. So this sunflower, I only used yellow paint and a little bit of brown. And after I put the first coat down, I added a little cornstarch to the paint to thicken it up, to add a little texture. I'd like to, I know there's different mediums that you can use to add to your acrylic paint to thicken it up. And you can actually uh, paint with a palette knife. And I'd like to learn to do that sometime. I really like the effect of it. But anyway, after I got done uh, painting the outside of the flower, again, I painted the inside brown because it's going to be covered up with glass and jewelry. So I started to decorate my first sunflower by putting a real pretty brooch in the middle. I took the pin off the back of it so that it would sit flat. And then I had a necklace that I liked. It was faux pearls and gold beads and I cut it so that it would fit right around the brooch. And so that the beads wouldn't fall off, I used a crimping bead to put on the end and then crimped it with this little tool here. And then I went ahead and cut another um, piece of the necklace and crimped that again so that there was two layers of beads around the brooch. So earlier that day, I had taken a clear glass plate and smashed it up so that I could uh, decorate the sunflower, put it on top of the sunflower. I've been looking at a lot of Pinterest clips, and they have a lot of um, broken glass art on canvas, which I think looks really neat. Some of them um, I've always wanted to try, so this is my first attempt at it. And anyway, this glass, after you smash it up, is not always, you know, in the exact shape that you want, want it to be. I had to kind of sift through it. And the pieces that I um, needed, a few extra ones, I took out my stained glass tools. And in that is something called a snipper. It's with the red handle on it there. And you can actually snip the pieces of glass off that you don't want on there to reshape the piece of glass to the way that you want it. So it's kind of neat. So in another bowl there, I have some green glass. And um, if you watched any of my other videos, I do a lot of um, glass tumbling to make faux sea glass. And I've said before that some glass, when you break it up, it's just painted on so that when you uh, tumble it, it comes clear, the color comes out. So this green glass was actually that. So I didn't bother tumbling it, so I smashed it up and thought I'd use it in this project. So after I was done arranging the clear glass on there, I went ahead and put some of the green glass. I thought that was a real pretty color that it added to it. In preparation for the next canvas and flower, I had prepared some crushed glass that I had purchased at Michael's. And what I did was I took some black alcohol ink and I added it to the crushed glass, <laughs> which for some reason kind of squirted all over the place. But anyway, um, when you're doing this, just add a little bit at a time, stir it, and then continue to add more till you get the desired color because... Um, it really is very concentrated. So this uh, alcohol ink I got on Amazon, I'll link it in the description below, but it is, um, you can use it to color epoxy resin and it works really well at coloring these different, this different crushed glass. 
and it really doesn't have a brand name on it but uh, it worked really well it dried fast and um, I was able to use it for this project so I started this sunflower by putting the crushed glass that I had dyed with the alcohol ink in the center and um, so you have to make sure that this is dry before you put the resin on because if you put the resin on um, when it's not dry the it'll color the resin and another thing about um, it dyed with alcohol ink you cannot put resin on it that has alcohol ink in it because it will release the color from that glass there so you would have a mixture of black and then whatever other color because it has alcohol in it. Um, I put a little uh, brooch or piece of jewelry in the middle and then I used this glass that I had tumbled. I don't remember if it was a vase or what it was. I guess it was really small because this was all the glass that I got from it. And I thought it was real pretty. It kind of reminds me of uh, candy corn from Halloween, the way it has the orange and the yellow uh, colors in it very very pretty and I just went ahead and arranged that around the sunflower as best I could there was just enough I think to go around next I put the green glass around the corners like I did with the other one and then I was ready to start the resin so the first thing I did was open the window and kick the cats out and shut the door so they couldn't get in. So the resin that I'm using for this project is Dr. Crafty. It's uh, on Amazon. I'll put the link below. There are all sorts of resins on Amazon. The smaller the bottles that you buy, the more expensive it is per ounce. So um, I had tried a smaller bottle of Dr. Crafty and I liked it, so that's why I'm using it again. I bought a, um, bigger containers of it. So you need to wear gloves. It's in your best interest to use a respirator. Do it in a well-ventilated area. This is um, just like the other resins. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So one part of the resin to the um, one part hardener and the weird thing about this resin is and I didn't notice it with the smaller container that I bought so I don't know what's going on but it seems to set up fine but the hardener is usually the thicker one when you pour it and it's harder to get out of the bottle but in this case I've been noticing that the first one that you pour um, is much much thicker and very difficult to get out of the bottle but it doesn't seem to have um, any effect unless they switch the labels on them by accident. I don't know. It seems to be working fine. So once you've measured them out and have both of them in the container, you need to mix it for two to three minutes, stirring slowly, be sure to scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get. Of course, this video is sped up, so it looks like I'm stirring it real fast, but I'm not. When you're done stirring it, you can start pouring the resin on. I use a spoon and kind of divvy it out and make sure I get over all of the glass. I noticed in um, some videos that some people have put out, they just kind of uh, put a little bit on. They don't cover the entire canvas, and I think I would like it for the whole canvas to be totally covered and uh, for the resin to go down the sides and kind of be spread out on the sides. So these are two 10 by 10 canvases. And I think I used a total of 200 milliliters, uh, 100 and 100. And it actually, after I took it into the other room, I went and checked on it. And it looked kind of thin in some areas, so I mixed up another total of 100 milliliters, 50 and 50, and put it in the areas that I thought um, needed a little extra coverage. And here you can see me smoothing it out with my... Uh, finger and um, I like it when it kind of 
drips evenly down the sides. I don't know if that's possible, but um, I just want to make sure everything is covered evenly. So normally after I pour resin, I use a heat gun and blow the bubbles, little bubbles out, because you get a lot of bubbles, but honestly, I didn't notice any. I don't know if it was because it was on the canvas that they're not as evident or, or what the deal is. You could see the little bubbles in the cup and on the spoon, but then once you put it down on the canvas, um, you really couldn't see any. So I didn't need to use the heat gun. I have seen other people use heat guns though on canvases. So, so I'm not sure, but like I said, I didn't see any bubbles. So when you're done putting the resin on, you just need to let it dry on a flat surface and um, let it dry overnight between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature in the room can really affect uh, the drying and it may actually not dry if it's real hot or real cold. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.